Hi class T, it's time for chapter 8. Mrs Stone's office is too small for the two police officers, as well as Asher, Luke, Scott and me. Mrs Stone begins with a lecture about the dangers of unsafe buildings. She lists the grim ways we could have been injured or died and tells the police officers will be given a talk to the whole school about safety. She looks around at us all. No one is allowed near the gas works. Is that understood? I nod and stare at my feet. Any questions, she says. I don't dare ask a question, but I see Asher put her hand up. So, where can we go, she says. Mrs Stone frowns. What do you mean? Well, says Asher, there's nothing round here. There's nothing to do. There's the sports centre, says Mrs Stone. Can't afford it, says Asher. There are lots of after school clubs that are free, says Mrs Stone. You can join some of those. There are always lots of things to do. It's still school, said Luke. Mrs Stone shakes her head. The clubs are fun. You and Scott should come to some. It's not the same, I say. Mrs Stone rolls her eyes. Why not? She looks annoyed with me now. You can st still see your friends. I look at Asher, Luke and Scott, hoping they can help me out. But they don't say anything. I think of Asher and me lying in the long grasses, blowing dandelion seeds and making wishes. I turn back to Mrs Stone. When you were our age, where did you go? Mrs Stone frowns at me. Izzy, what are you on about? Did you ever have somewhere away from school and home? Somewhere you ran barefoot with your friends? I ask. Mrs Stone sits back in a chair. Well, I was lucky. We had woods at the back of our road. My friends and I spent hours there. What happened to them? I asked. Well, we all grew up and moved on, says Mrs Stone. I mean the woods, I say. What happened to them? Mrs Stone frowns. There are houses built there now. But you remember what it felt like running wild in those woods, I say. Of course, she says. If you could go back in time and see yourself there, what would you say? How could you tell you and your friends that the woods have gone? How would you tell them that there would be a day they would play in there for the last time? Mrs Stone opens her mouth and then closes it again. A breeze flaps the window blinds. And it's as if a small piece of wild has slipped into the room with us. We're losing our well place too, I say. This isn't the point, Izzy, says Mrs Stone. You put yourselves at risk in the gasworks. You went near a wild animal too. It's a good thing it was caught before it bit one of you. Where is he now? asks Scott. Where's our wolf? Mrs Stone looks at him. I don't know, Scott. She shakes her head. Scott shakes his head. You must know. My concern is for your safety and not the wolf, she says. <laughs> Scott bangs his fist on the desk. Where's our wolf? Mrs Stone stands up. Scott, I think you had better leave this room to cool down a bit. Scott walks out and slams the door behind him. Mrs Stone sighs. I think we've finished this meeting. We have to know what happened to our wolf, I say. One of the policemen steps forward. I'll find out, he says. I'll find out and let you know. We sit through assembly and morning lessons. I stand in the line for lunch, but Asher finds me and says, Mrs Stone wants to see us in her office again. Luke and Scott are there too. There's someone else in the office too. It's the man 
we saw at the gasworks who took photos of Connor's notebook. He was there when our wolf was captured. This is Finn Evans, says Mrs Stone. The policeman put him in contact with us today because he can tell you about the wolf. He wants to tell you about the plans for the gasworks too. I turned to the man and scowl. You want to turn the gasworks into shops and offices. I listened to him. Listen to him, Izzy, Mrs Stone says. I think you'll want to hear what he has to say. Finn Evans smiles at us. I work for a wildlife charity. We've been trying to buy the gasworks and the land that goes with it and turn it into a nature reserve. We have other brownfield sites along the Thames. Brownfield, I say. Brownfield sites are ones that have already been built on, says Finn. Some sites are good for wildlife, especially for insects. The picture your brother drew of a bombardier beetle confirmed that the gasworks site is one we'd love to have. City nature reserves become space for wildlife pulls a piece of paper from his pocket and opens it out to show a map of the gasworks and the land around it. This is what we'd like to do with the gasworks site, he says. We crowd around the map. It shows paths and walkways around the ponds and alongside the river. The red brick building has been replaced with a smaller building with a label that says visitor centre and coffee shop. So do you mean it's going to stay wild, I say? That's the plan, says Finn, but we haven't been able to buy the land yet. We might need your help. That's why I wanted to see you. Don't ask us, I say. We haven't got any money. Finn laughs. It's not your money we want. Two elderly sisters own the land. We need to convince them to sell it to us. It's our last chance. A big property tycoon is offering them loads of money for it. If we could show the Norton sisters the drawings Connor did, it might help them see what we could do with the land. It would be great if we could use some of the drawings or anything else you can think of. We have a meeting with them next week. What about our wolf? says Scott. Where is he now? He's safe, says Finn. He can't live in a cage. It'll kill him, says Scott. Finn smiles. He won't have to. He's going to live in Scotland, where he'll be able to run across the mountains. He's a wolf, says Asher. You can't just set him free. Finn shakes his head. He's not a wolf. Well, not completely. Scott looks at me. Then at Finn. What do you mean? He's a wolf dog, says Finn. He's a cross between a wolf and a dog. A lot of people want a wolf dog because they think they look cool or tough. But actually, they can be difficult to look after. They have the wild in them. People love their puppies, but can't cope with them when they get to become young dogs. So where is he now? says Scott. Wild Dog Rescue have him until he's put on some weight. But I have a friend in Scotland who wants to give him a permanent home. He's had wolf dogs before. Scott pushes his hands deep in his pockets. So he'll be okay? He'll be more than okay, says Finn. He smiles. I'll get my friend to send photos. Luke shakes his head. So you mean he isn't really a wolf at all? He's part wolf, says Finn. Part wild. Like us, I want to say. The wild is in us too. Maybe even a city can be part wild. The land around the gasworks is still a wild space, even without our wolf. We'd been given the chance to save it. I turned to Finn. We'll help, I say. We want to see the Norton sisters too.
And that's the end of chapter eight. Keep safe and keep washing those hands.